Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Paige, this is Seeking Alexandria, and guys, welcome back for part two. I mentioned in part one of the Urban Decay Stay Naked Foundation Review, which I will of course link right up here for you guys, that I picked up the rest of the new complexion products that they released. Boom, they are right here. We have the concealer, the color correctors, which there is a white and a red, as well as two of their little lip tinty things, which I'm so excited just to test out, get a feel for the consistency, how they wear on the lips, all the good stuff. Now diving into the description for just the concealer, it says this is a a vegan real skin matte concealer with 25% more pigment and full coverage that lasts up to 24 hours. It has 25 shades and it features their nine shade intensities, three master tones, and five undertones. And it also says here that when it comes to those 25 shades, they broke it down into nine shade intensities, three master tones, and five undertones. And that's very similar if you missed yesterday's video to the foundation. They had a similar breakdown. But then it goes on to say that you can use this flexible real skin matte finish concealer for just about anything from covering imperfections to highlighting your cheekbones and you also get 0.35 ounces of product which actually if memory serves isn't this 0.33 Three. Yeah, the one from uh, Tarte Shape Tape here, this is 0.34, so you are getting a decent amount of product. I believe the Too Faced Born This Way Concealer, which is another one of my absolute favorites, that one you get half a fluid ounce in, so it's, it's a pretty generous size, but this right here is pretty standard, I think, for a decent amount of product in concealers. All right, so this little guy is $29. Here's the component plastic as well, just like the um, foundation bottle here. I do like it, though. At least it's pretty. Again, you're not going to get the most luxurious feel out of it, but it does have a nice appeal to it as far as the aesthetics go. Now, like I said, I picked up 10NN, which is the ultra fair with neutral neutral undertones, and I actually love this color. I'm actually going to take and put that up against my porcelain beige just because it's my favorite. I use it all the time. You know, well, I mean, they're pretty close. There is just a little bit more brightness, though, to the Tarte Shape Tape. I'm excited to also throw out there and dive into these little correctors because I guess that is where these are supposed to come in handy. So it looks like they both come in the same style packaging here. I actually do like these. The more that I look at them, there is a sleekness that I really appreciate. Just the gold detailing, I love. All right, and then here they are, both swatched on the hand. That white actually does have a beautiful amount of opacity to it. Now, for me, here's where I get a little bit concerned. I was down in the description, and I was just kind of reading about both of these, you know, application, all of that. And down here, it says, transform your foundation, concealer, and complexion products with our extra pigmented red and white Stay Naked Pro customizers. This vegan full coverage formula has a real skin matte finish and does everything to transform product shades to correct dark circles and hyperpigmentation. Brighten foundations, concealers, and blushes with the pure white shade. Medium to dark, this is where I get confused, medium to dark ultra deep shades will love the pure red. It'll knock out darker under eye circles and eliminate discoloration or hyperpigmentation in a single swipe. So I got to thinking to myself, does that mean that this isn't just like a straight up red or red toned color corrector? Because that's what I thought this was. I thought this would just be like a regular universal color corrector. And for me, it was just confusing because when you look at these colors, I thought to myself, you can't tell me that this one is for just light to medium and this one is for just like medium to deep or very deep skin tones because neither one of these is going to do what the other will do. Example, this white one right here isn't going to cancel out your like red under eye or your blue bags in your under eye. Um, but it will highlight the area, like maybe your inner eye or something like that. But then to the contrast, even on a deep skin tone, this one isn't going to highlight like this one will, and this one won't cover like this one will. You know what I mean? Like that just, I don't know, I don't know if it's just me, but that just doesn't make a ton of sense just to be like, oh, well, you can color correct with this one, but only if you're medium to deep skin tones, and you can highlight with this one only if you're light, I don't, I don't know, maybe it's just me that it makes no sense. That's why we're going to test it out, see if I can use this color corrector, see if it's too dark, does it sheer out, how does it work, all of that good stuff. All right, so we're good we're moved in we look like a lioness rar and uh, we're gonna start off first with this little color corrector here i just want to try it on the underside of one eye i'm only going to apply a little bit because it obviously is very very rich in pigment and then i am going to blend this out with their sponge the little silicone part here and just kind of get a feel oh wow the spreadability of this is a lot okay holy cow holy cow Go has got some spread happening, honey. Probably shouldn't have taken it all the way to my friggin', you know, neighbor's hairline over there. Oh, man. Okay, so it spread a little bit far, but that's fine. Not a big deal. We're still just testing things out. We know that it's spreadable. Woo! So I just gave that a second to kind of sit there and settle, and I'm going to go in now with their concealer over top of it. And just... Yes. Kind of see. Now, I am getting a little bit of transfer 
that's a little bit annoying. I guess it didn't dry long enough. I'm not sure. Uh, well, let's just go ahead here. I'm going to layer up some of their concealer. I'm just going to keep wiping that off on my hand. And then I grabbed a different sponge over here. This is my Fenty sponge. And I'm going to blend it in. Okay, it's not totally covering the red. Maybe the red just didn't have enough dry down time. I thought it did. Wow, a ton of transfer. Guys, I don't think it's covering. I think it's just coming right back off. It's literally, it didn't do anything or go anywhere. Guys, this is beyond perplexing to me because here I am thinking it's covering. No, it's literally all in my sponge. I'm gonna try it on the other side. I'm gonna try it on the other side. I'm gonna let it sit and I'm gonna use literally like, okay, hold on. Uh, I'm gonna use that much. Okay, I'm guys, I'm determined now. I just have to know if it'll work as a color corrector or if it won't. Like, I, I don't know. Okay, let's just do it again. I'm gonna blend that out. Oh man, there's a lot on here again. Ha! Ah! All right, so we're just gonna let that dry. Let it dry, let it dry, let it dry. All right, so I went ahead, I waited for that to dry down. I waited about five-ish minutes. Thought the dry down looked pretty good. So then I scooped off a little bit of the Urban Decay Concealer off the wand and I applied it to my under eye. And it did the same thing again, even just with me patting it in with my finger. Um, it seems to me like this product just doesn't dry down quickly. Like for example, right here, this is the same swatch I did. It's been on my hand for about 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. And I'm just gonna like show you, it does not dry quickly. So if you're wanting to work with these products, just something to keep in mind, because we're, I mean, it almost looks like it could work, but at what point, like how long am I gonna have to wait to put my products on? You know what I mean? For me, I don't know. I don't really like the formula. I wish it would dry down to that natural matte finish they were talking about, because I actually think if it would have dried down to that, it could have been a really nice um, consistency. But let's go ahead now that we got that out of the way, and I do want to try and and do some makeup. Now, the first thing I want to do is go in just with this Urban Decay foundation. I want to see what kind of coverage I get because this will determine the foundation I go in with. So we're just going to go in here and spread it around. It actually does have a beautiful spread to it. It feels really nice and silky. I'm going to go in with my dose of colors. Guys, I washed three sponges for this video just because I knew what was about to happen. So let's go in here and blend this little bad boy out. I can always go in and do the Scott Barnes technique if I want to. I actually did a full video on that. I'll link it up there. It was the one he did on Tati, but I took it and I made it like an everyday wearable kind of um, option because obviously what he did on her girl, that ain't gonna last. So I wanted it to be something that you could use all day long. I actually think that looks really, really beautiful. The brightness on it is very nice. I would say it's a decent medium coverage. I wanna build it up a little bit or at least see if I can. So I'm gonna go in another round here. I actually think I will go the Scott Barnes route with this just so I can keep everything as even as possible. So I'm going to go ahead here and you guys are kind of going to get another crash course in that. Wow, this has a beautiful glide to it. Like very nice and smooth. I like that a lot. Let's go ahead and blend that out again. And also if you missed the Dose of Colors foundation review, you will have just seen it uh, yesterday. I'll link it up there for you guys if you did miss that. And it had this sponge in it and I talk all about it. So Check that out if you're curious. In keeping with that little technique, I'm going to also highlight the center of my face and the bridge and the jawline a little bit. I know it's, it's gonna look a little crazy before it gets better, but I promise it gets better at some point here. Now I'm just going in with a little bit of my Huda Tantour in Fair on the little butt of this sponge. This is one of those keep the faith moments because you really have to keep the faith to do this technique. Otherwise you look literally like you're trying to contour a corpse. So just, just stay with me y'all. Now to meld everything together, I actually am gonna grab a little tiny bit of the Dose of Colors foundation. This is in the shade 110 and I'm very, very, very lightly going to pounce some of this in the areas between the concealer and the contour. Now I'll go in lightly and I'll just add a little bit more of the reshaping. And I know that there are a lot of little pieces to doing this routine that seem very counterintuitive. Like Paige, why are you doing this? You're covering this back up. And you're not wrong in thinking that. But what I like about going through and trying to apply my stuff like this is that it isn't so much about the time you take because it does take a little bit more time to yes, go in and like blend it all out. 
but when you're all said and done what you've created is a nice thin layer of product and for me that's what really makes it sit down on the skin and look so lifelike and it just has this beautiful way of melding in not to say you can't do this same technique you know with the cream bronzer and the cream stuff um, by doing it in the normal order because you definitely still can foundation concealer cream products powder you know the works and, and do it like we normally would but this is something that I will be showing you guys every so often on my channel just so you guys can get a feel for the fact that not only does it work but it goes in seamlessly on the skin and I really really enjoy using it this way so I just like to throw it out there's just one new way that we can kind of switch up our makeup nothing saying you have to do it but I'm gonna go in now and I'll just grab a little bit more of that concealer from Urban Decay and I will lightly kind of reshape it out and just reblend it into that area not to mention, by doing it this way, you're working in very, very thin layers. And the thinner the layers you go in with on your skin, the more lifelike they will look as well. So it just helps with all of those little things. And guys, it's going to be real hot today. Your girl really just needs a situation to, to, to work out, okay? Just to work out. I would say that as far as this concealer goes, I'm leaning more towards the medium coverage side of things um, than I am full coverage. Not even buildable, I would say, to full. Mainly just because I do see a lot of hyperpigmentation that peeks through. Now for this white concealer, I just want to try this like right up in this area. Also, they started a lawnmower right outside, so I apologize if you guys can hear that. I don't know why everybody around here feels the need to make as much noise as possible, but they, they really do. Like it's hang season in northern Michigan apparently, and y'all, pretty soon we're going to be hearing the, what's what'll be next? Corn harvest will be next, and that's um, not too far away from me, but it's close enough that you can hear their machinery all day long, so that's great. All right, now blending that out, that does have a beautiful brightness to it. Um, obviously, I'm going in and shearing it out quite a bit, but I do like the way it looks on the skin. I could see this definitely as something I would use to correct my concealer when it pulls too dark because what I like about it is it doesn't give you like a sheen at all to the skin. It doesn't give you anything but like that nice second skin but bright and that is really beautiful. I just want to kind of show you guys like while we're here we might as well play around for a second because this isn't going in the direction that I thought it would go but I want to just show you with my what is this? This is my Tarte Shape Tape Porcelain Beige and I want to just apply Apply a little bit just to like this area and you guys saw I barely touched my face and I'm gonna blend that out just because I want you guys to see like first of all the difference in coverage the difference in the way that it spreads on the face um, it's just so much thicker and this is again the concealer I'm used to using I'm not comparing the two um, as far as one being a dupe for the other but it's more so just me trying to show you the difference like what I would typically have as far as coverage goes even just barely applying any of that Tarte Shape Tape to this area you can see there is so much more coverage and like on this side you can just see so much other like little um, skin texture kind of poking through and with the Tarte Shape Tape all of that is gone it's it's just not there. I don't know. For me, I look at this Tarte Shape Tape side and I feel like even on camera, it looks like so much more full and ready and just like, oh yeah, like this side, this side is like going to prom. This side is like, I'm going to go run track, but like I'm wearing a little makeup because I want my guy to think I'm cute, but like I don't want to think I'm too cute. So I'm just wearing a little bit of makeup. That's this side. Girl, this side. Hello. She's about to get crowned beauty queen. Hello. She's about ready to get that crown, honey. Get it all up on that head. Mm. I'm going to grab my usual here hourglass setting powder. Go ahead and set it down. After I patted out all those creases, we apply a little bit of the hourglass powder here. Now we're just going to bronze up here with a little bit of my BH Brilliance Bronzer and a Golden Gal. Guys, what am I going to call this video? Let's talk about Urban Decay slash get ready with me slash let me talk about farmers. And I tried to make this a quick video and like be an efficient video and it literally backfired the worst it possibly could. So that's good for me. Love that. I'm going to go in again here. We have the Jouer Cheeky Summer Blush Duo and I'm just going to lightly kind of pop between both. Oh my God, you guys, my skin, it looks so good. Oh my gosh. Like why? Why do I not always spend the time to do this? <sighs> it looks so nice. Hello, tractor man. I see you. You can see me, but I see you. I'm a creep. All right, beautiful people. So I am back. I realized while I was filming that the camera, first of all, shut off and I didn't notice. 
I don't know how I didn't notice, but I didn't notice. I thought to myself, should I turn it back on? Should I not? And as I'm sitting here literally talking to you guys about cows, I figured, you know what? Best to leave it off and like actually keep this video moving because as you guys know, I talk a lot. So let's go ahead and just tell you guys real quick what else I used on the eyes is probably what you're the most curious about. I went in a little bit here with the Huda Neon. This is the pink palette. And I went in just with these two shades right here, this pink and purple. And I worked those through the crease. But then on the lids, all I wanted was a nice little light whimsical look. So I went in again with the only palette I own. This is the Rach Loves Pixie Highlight Palette. And I grabbed Clutch and Lace per usual. And I just like threw them all over there. I don't know what I was really going for. Just a nice light airy look. And that's exactly what I got. And I love it. So perfect there. Um, I did, however, make what I believe could be a colossal mistake. I went in with, there it is, with my Urban Decay um, Perversion Mascara, which for those of you that have been watching me for a long time, this used to be like one of my ride or dies. I still do like it. Um, the problem I have with it is that when I put it on the lower lash line, it transfers like pretty quickly, pretty bad. I'll end up with little flakies or it'll just like smudge. And it's only when I put it on the lower lash line for some reason. And guess who put it on her lower lash line today? Because she wasn't thinking, oh, this girl. Now for anything else that is on my face, I will of course leave it listed down below for you guys if you are curious, but I don't want to waste any more time. I want to dive into these new glassy lip things because I am so curious. Where did they go? Hello? They were literally right in front of me, so that's good. Um, these are their Vice Lip Chemistry Lasting Glassy Tints, and I only grabbed two shades. I grabbed Stacked and Physique, and the reason that I grabbed these, first of all, I grabbed one that's on the pinkier tone and then one that is more on a neutral tone, which according to the box, neither of them are going to match me. But according to the description here, it says that these are a vegan high gloss lip tint that reacts to your pH and creates a custom shade unique to your tone. It's lightweight, balm-like texture gives your lips a hit of hydration so they feel moisturized. And it says the lasting glassy tint adjusts to you. The color fully develops and reveals itself after just a few minutes and lasts up to five hours. The Vice Lip Chemistry Vegan Formula goes on smooth and glossy, never sticky, and does not transfer. Let's look at the packaging here. I like this. Open it up and okay, that looks, oh, it's very pink, but you can barely see it. Okay, you can see it a little, hello? Like what's a girl that gotta do to get some color around here? Girl, that's not a lip tint, that's a lip nothing. Hello? Okay, there we go. I built it up a little bit. That one actually is almost the exact same shade as my eyes, so that's interesting. Um, it's a little bit more of like a mauve version of what I have on, but still pretty close. Um, now I'm officially shook to the core. So I grabbed the shade Physique, right? I want you guys to look. Look at the, look at the packaging. Do you see? This is brown brown. Y'all want to tell me what the hell apricot pink color this is that I got on my hand right here? Sure don't look like no physique that I purchased off the internet, I tell you that right now. I was debating on whether or not, like, should I line my lips for this? Like, what's it gonna, I don't, ugh, I don't know. Okay, let's just try it. Ew. Wait a second, wait a second. It's streaky and it looks weird. Ew. How is this gonna work? All right, so it's been a couple of minutes. It actually is getting darker. Okay, all right, I'm good. Um, do I love that it's not super rich in opacity? Yeah, I think it goes without saying that I would like it to be a little bit more. Oh, you know what I could do? Oh, guys, idea. Um, I could add a lip liner. That's what I'll do. I'll just add a little lip liner around the outside. Try going in with this one here. This is Shot Clock by ColourPop. You trailer heart girls go around the outside, around the outside, around the outside. Just adding that little bit of liner helps so much make that look like fuller and more put together. And all right, you guys, this is the finished look. First of all, I want to know from you guys, what do you think down below? Um, I feel like everything looks a little bit too monochromatic. Anyways, let's go ahead and talk about the products in today's video because like I said at the beginning, I feel like this did go in a very, very different direction and I wasn't anticipating it, but I'm glad that we kind of went into all of this with an open mind because I think there's a lot that can be discovered here that's good and bad. So first things first, um, let's dive into the correctors, the red and the white. Um, do I think that for me, either of them, I really enjoy? No, I feel like I can get very similar effects with just using a nice bright concealer and adjusting it that way when it comes to the concealer side of things. Um, when it comes to concealing the with the red one or with the white one as far as correcting, I wouldn't use them, like I said, to correct a concealer. I might use them to correct foundation. Now, when it comes to the concealer, 
Again, let's go ahead and throw up the uh, up close for you guys so you can really see how things are looking. But again, I don't think it looks bad. I've already said I think it's a decent medium coverage concealer. It's just, I don't know, it's not something that I'd be like, yes, you need it. I think that um, I've tried other concealers that are nicer, but if you do want something that has a natural matte finish, something that's very skin-like, dries down and gives you a medium coverage, then I do think that this is an option, especially if you like the shade range and how they developed that. It might be a nice route to go. You know, just something to think about, but nothing that I'm like, wow, oh my God, you have to have it. Guys, I almost just forgot here, I was like about ready to close out the video. This glossy lip situation, um, I gotta be honest with you, I actually like it. I, I'm shocked at the moment. I'm still kind of like, what happened to this? Because when I first applied it, y'all saw, I was like, oh my God. Like my face was very much so not impressed. And now that I went in and I kind of evened it out a little bit with a pencil, first of all, that helps a lot in general with any lip product. But looking at the color and how far it really did develop, I actually really like the way that it did it because it does stay on your lips kind of like a film. This isn't a um, like a lip stain or something that penetrates and like dries down and feels uncomfortable. This feels very mm, like it has a little bit of glide, a little bit of slip left to it, but it doesn't feel in any way heavy. Look at me, I'm like, nah, 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 nah. but it doesn't feel heavy at all, which I really like. And I wasn't sure what it was going to do. And this is almost like an in-between, like a satin, I would say. All right, everybody. Uh, sorry about that. So we have a little change of plants. As you can see, this is end of the day page here. And girl is looking like it's been a long day because it has. So let's go ahead and chit chat. As you can tell by the abrupt, like non segue there, um, this was actually going to have an entirely different ending because when I finished it this morning, I just wrapped everything up. But instead of doing it, like I was going Going to do it I thought in the interest of time trying to make this video a freckle shorter um, I would stop on here at the end of the day give you my thoughts now first up the thing I want to talk about the most is the concealer guys I have been wearing this full face of makeup okay this full face of makeup for over 12 hours it has been such a long warm day it was like 80 76 to 80 ish degrees here today and your girl was out in it participating in living her life and let me tell you Wow, I'm actually pretty impressed. Now, did it crease on me? Yes, I will go ahead and throw in the up close here in a second. But what I want you guys to remember when you look at that is that for me, having a creasy under eye isn't super crazy. For me, it's all about the level of crease, which I know sounds crazy, but I will have concealers that will only crease in the bag, like in the line of my under eyes. And that happens usually right around like hour five, six, six, seven ish, depending on the concealer. And I'm not mad at that. You know, at that point, it's better almost the entire day anyways and my wrinkles under my eyes are so deep set that I don't notice so for me when I have an issue with the concealer it's when it creases so bad that it's like a black hole and that crease just like sucks all the surrounding foundation into the crease kind of like an atomic wedgie but for your under eyes that's what your girl can't get behind and these didn't do that which I'm really happy about um let's go ahead and throw in the up close right now uh you will also notice by the way what I said this morning about me applying that urban decay mascara and having it transparent Transfer. Girl, yes, I am looking so raccoony over here. I got black stuff all over, smudges and dots, and I didn't want to go in and start wiping it away because then obviously I would have lost some of that concealer coverage as well. So that was just kind of to show you guys where we're at. Am I mad at it? No. Again, is it the most revolutionary? Is it my favorite concealer? No, it's not. I mean, it's a good medium coverage concealer. Now, moving on to the lip things as well. This is the other thing I really wanted to touch on. I really liked how this applied. It actually felt pretty good at first, but for me, what I don't like is that when when it dries down it kind of settles like from that nice satin finish I was talking about into like a dry almost like thick matte like dry down version and it kind of reminds me of like a thicker lip tint but it just keeps drying down and it's almost like it stays a little bit like moist on this well I hate that word blah, blah, blah. but it stays a little bit moist <laughs> on the surface by like sucking the moisture out of my lips in some weird way and no matter what as it wears it doesn't maintain like any sort of a satin or a gloss which for me would be the appeal of something like this that says it's actually what is it like a liquid a liquid glass or something yeah a lasting glassy tint and I just didn't get that glass effect um, again at first I think it was not so bad but as it wore it was just more of a lip tint um, so for me do I love it no do I like it like it's okay you guys while I'm here I might as well end this one out so thank you so much for watching let me know your thoughts opinions all of that down below I hope that this video was helpful at least 
least in some way, even though it was super weird, random, and didn't go the way I thought it would at all. I would love to hear from you guys down below. And don't forget, you can check me out on Instagram and on Twitter. They are both linked down below. And of course, if you haven't done so yet, please do not also forget you can subscribe and turn on your post notifications to this here YouTube channel. Y'all, I do upload five videos a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. They go up bright and early between 6 and 7 a.m. my time here in good old northern Michigan. And it is early, it is bright, it's fun. We like listen to tractors and lawnmowers and all kinds of hay bale and people all day long. You guys, that is it. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Please do not forget to have a great day, night, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching this, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. I ain't got too much to say, girl. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Paige. This is Seeking Alexandria. And guys, welcome back to part two. We are not... I did mention... <clears throat> I did mention to you all that this video was coming when I did my Stay Naked Review Foundation. This guy... Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Paige, this is Seeking Alexandria, and guys, welcome back to part two, honey. Where's the part two? Part two, welcome back to part two. And then all over the lid, I just wanted it to be light and whimsical, so I took a little bit of my um, high, high low. So I took a little bit of my high, 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 high. We're just gonna keep breezing by that, Paige. The fact that you just, the high, 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 high. Wow.